Welcome back. Almost ran out of time in that last uh, video. So let's just start from uh, the beginning for problem number 14. So I drew the figure, and they told us you know, that this line is perpendicular to that line, and they, they drew it here, and that this is perpendicular to that, and they drew it there. They told us this was 125 degrees, this is x. And then the one piece of information they tell us is that ln, this line, is equal to lm, and I marked it here. And what we said at the end of the last video is, well, if these two sides are equal, we also know from geometry class that the base angles are also going to be equal. And then let's see what we can do with that, whether we can figure out x. Well, the first step we can do is we can say, well, if this is 125 degrees, what is this angle right here? Well, they're going to have to add up to 180 because they're supplementary. So this is going to be, what's 180 minus? 125, or what's 80 minus 25? It's 55 degrees. This is 55 degrees, right? And then if that is 50, let me make sure I'm doing my math right, right? That's 55. So if that's 55, then this is also going to be 55. And then if th if these are both 55, what is this angle up here? Well, they're all in a triangle, so they have to add up to 180. So 55 plus 55 is 110. So this one has to be 70 degrees, right? Or 180 minus 110, right? They have to add up to 180 degrees. So this is 70 degrees right here. And now can we figure out what this angle is here? This is what I call the angle game, because you just have to keep figuring out angles. Well, if this is 70 degrees, what this angle plus this angle, they're going to be complementary, right? They're going to come out to 90, because this is 90. So all we have left is you know, 90 degrees here. So if these two have to add up to 90 degrees, and this is 20 degrees. 20 degrees, that says 20. I know I wrote it really small. You probably can't read it. Because right? this, we know that this, this whole thing is a right angle, because this is a right angle. So if this is 90, we know that this whole thing is 90. So this is 20. And now finally, I think we're ready for x, because x plus 90 plus 20 has to be equal 180, because it's in the same triangle. So x plus 90 plus 20 is equal to 180. x plus 110 is equal to 180. x is equal to 70 degrees. And we are done. Next problem. Problem number 15. A measuring cup contains 1 -fifth a cup of orange juice. 1 -fifth a cup of orange juice. Orange juice. It is then filled to the one cup mark that is a mixture containing equal amounts of orange, grapefruit, and pineapple juices. What fraction of the final mixture is orange juice? Oh, this is interesting. So you have one fifth already orange juice, and then the next four fifths, the next four fifths is going to be equal parts, right? Because we're going to fill to the one cup mark. It's going to be equal parts orange. Grapefruit, grape, I'll just write grape, and pineapple. Pineapple. I have to do three, right? So the next four fifths is going to be split amongst these three. So and it's equally, right? So how much more orange juice are we putting in? Well, we took four fifths, and one third of this four fifths is going to be orange juice. So the amount of orange juice we're putting in now is one third times the 4 fifths, right? So we're putting in 4 fifteenths orange juice. And we already had 1 fifth orange juice, so 1 fifth plus 4 fifteenths, that equals 3 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths, which equals 7 fifteenths. That is how much, that is the final um, uh, mixture of orange juice. And does that make sense intuitively? Right, that makes sense, because this is like 20% orange juice, and then we're adding maybe a little bit uh, a little bit less than a fourth. So we'll have a little bit less than a half in the, in the glass. All right, next problem. This is another one where my cousin's answer seems a little uh, suspicious. She had marked up this book. All right, problem number 16. If A plus 2B a plus 2b is equal to 125% of 4b. So that equals 125%. Another, If you want to write 125% as a decimal, which I like to do, it's 
125% of 4b. What is the value of a over b? So we want to figure out a over b. Let's just solve this thing. So a plus 2b is equal to, what's 1.25 times 4? If you have $1.25 and you have that 4 times, that's 5, right? 4 times 1 and then 4 times a quarter, that's another dollar. That's 5b. And then subtract 2b from both sides. You get a is equal to 3b. Divide both sides by b. And you get a over b is equal to 3. And you are done the problem. Problem number 17. OK, they have a number line. Let's see this number line. Let me see how much I have to draw of this number line to minimize my drawing. They say 0 is here, 1 is here. And then they, they drew like a, how many hash marks are there? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 hash marks. OK. Oh, it says there, on the number line above, there are nine equal intervals between 0 and 1. What is the, what is the value of x? So there's, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, I have nine equal intervals. And then x is, x is right. I'm just make sure I draw it correctly. We have two marks, and then we have x. And actually, we have the square root of x. So there are nine equal intervals, right? So we could just view, well, this is 1 ninth, this is 2 ninths, this is 3 ninths, right? 4 ninths, this is 8 ninths, this is 9 ninths, right? This is 8 ninths, this is 7 ninths, this is 6 ninths, right? And this is 5 ninths, right? Because nine equal intervals. So we know that the square root of x is equal to 6 over 9. Square both sides. Well, and what's 6 over 9? That's the same thing as 2 over 3, right? So you square both sides, so you get x is equal to 4 ninths. 2 squared, 3 squared. We are done. Next problem. Image, clear image, image invert colors. All right, problem 18. In the xy coordinate plane, the distance between point b, so b is the point 10, comma 18. The distance between the point b and the point a, a is comma is point x comma 3. So the distance is 17 between these points. What is one possible value of x? So uh, this is the distance formula, and the distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem. So we, what we do is we say, well, the distance squared is, you know, the distance squared is equal to the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. And this is really just the Pythagorean theorem. And if you haven't learned that yet, you can actually, I don't think I've done a distance formula video. That's on my to-do list. But I'll do that. But it's just the Pythagorean theorem. So the distance squared, so 17 squared, is equal to, what's the change in x? So let's just call that. 10 minus x. 10 minus x squared plus, plus, and then we know that a change in y. So 18 minus 3, so it's 15 squared. 15 squared. And what's, uh, so I know 15 squared is 225. This is going to be equal to x squared minus 20x. x squared minus 20x, and then, because it could be plus 100. And then we have, what's 17 squared? 17 times 17. 7 times 7 is 49. 1 times 7 is 7, plus 4 is 11. 0 plus 17. It is 289. 289. And so then we have, let's see, and then we can subtract 289 from both sides. So you get 0 is equal to x squared minus 20x plus, add these two together, 325 minus 289. I only have 10 seconds left, so I'll do it.